I'm Richard and welcome to ZP Production. So today we'll be doing this photo here. This is an ultra vibrant edit and this shoot has been done before it's with Tine for a few months back. I'm Richard and welcome to Zappy Productions. From this week onwards, I will do one Lightroom tutorial every week so that you know everybody can learn something. And also, during this tutorial itself, I will teach you really why am I doing such settings and so that you can create your own preset. In addition to that, I will actually put the preset and the file that I'm using to edit for this particular tutorial in the link below. However, the link has a password and the password is somewhere found in the middle of this video and at the end. So, you know, just watch through the video and then get the password and the link itself can be unlocked for you. So let's move on to the photo itself. So for today's video itself is this particular shot here. This is shot with Tine long ago. Uh, I believe that you have seen my previous you know, video edit for a more teal and orange look. And today will be a more natural, vibrant look edit for this video here. Every week I will do one. And if you want to see more such videos, do like and subscribe. But if not, let's carry on with this tutorial itself. So this is the edit itself in Lightroom. And this is the before on the left and after on the right. This shot is very simple. It's shot at about waist level with the sun to my right back. And therefore it's hitting the model directly. But because she's wearing a hat, it's actually covering her face while actually lighting up her dress very brightly. Now, this shot itself, we are going to go for a vibrant, ultra blue type of look. And usually, vibrance is more linked to the blues than any other color. So let's straight away jump into edit and see how we're going to achieve this photo itself. If you want the preset itself, it is in the link below. However, you have to go and find the password, which is in the middle and the end of the video. So for all my future tutorials, it will be the same as this. Okay, so we're going to reset the shot now and we're going to get this baseline photo itself. And let's start editing. Okay, with the shot itself, as I say, the most important part of a vibrant shot is all about the blues. So let's go all the way to the bottom and just increase the blues by about 50 for the saturation. Okay, and for the hue itself, I don't really like quite like this tint of blue. So I'll probably shift the tint to the left a bit. A bit of teal will always be, I don't know, for some reason it looks more appealing. And even then, it still looks natural. So let's go straight away all the way up again. For profile in this tutorial onwards, and in fact, all future tutorials, I will try to keep it to the Adobe profile because any other profile will have some issues, you know, if you try to use on other cameras. This profile that I'm going to share with you today actually works for, you know, both Canon and Sony cameras. I tested it out and it's pretty okay. So these edits are pretty much more universal than my previous ones. So let's go down to the exposure and contrast. And usually I will say for this shot, I said I need to raise contrast to about 11. But exposure, I'll keep it later because I have some explanation on it. So for the highlights, I will just drop it all the way. And depending on what number you need, for this profile, it's about 69, 70 something. Uh, the final profile itself, as I said, I will share with you, but you need to get the password in the video. So the shadows itself, I'll raise it to about 50. 54 like that upload this way okay for the whites itself it depends on the purpose so if you want a more crunchy shot shift the whites to the right if you want a more softer dull looking shot shift to the left and we are going to really increase the uh, contrast significantly and you no know, increase the general color so we probably don't want such a crunchy shot so for this shot itself i will actually reduce the whites to about minus 24 minus 20 and for the blacks itself i'll lift the blacks up because this is a underexposed shot uh, and i will not want to crush the blacks any further okay just to note if you're using a modern dslr modern mirrorless always underexpose the key regions like the face and stuff and properly expose the sky or should i say Expose the sky to the extent of your camera and the face is usually underexposed. That's pretty okay. And the reason we are going to do that is because uh, most modern cameras can recover shadow very well, but it cannot recover highlight. So the moment the sky is blown, it is over. Well, if the thing is underexposed, depending on your camera, you've got anywhere from two to four stops of latitude. Yes, it will introduce some noise, but you can probably fix it in noise reduction. So going back to the edit itself, for this shot, I want a bit more you know, natural and more soft feeling to it. So texture, clarity, and dehaze will all be dropped. Okay, for just the explanation, texture is the very in-depth, you know, contrast, the micro, the, I would say as the contrast on the skin level, the small little details, while clarity is the macro contrast, the big lines and the hair and stuff, things that are very obvious when you zoom out. 
while for the haze is the general hazy effect which is a combination of contrast and saturation and if you can see this way it, that is how it looks like it's a combination of contrast saturation and a little bit of clarity okay now going down below obviously this is a high vibrant shot and we are definitely going to increase the vibrance like crazy here well, for the saturation, we are just going to balance it out by dropping the general saturation of the shots itself. Now, this combination normally works out the best where you increase the vibrance, decrease the saturation. Well, I tried the opposite of increasing the saturation and decreasing the vibrance. That usually don't turn out really nice. And uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so for the curves itself, uh, because the highlights are quite burnt in this shot, I'll reduce the highlights just a bit, just a touch and increase the shadows just a bit. It's a small little S curve and there are two ways to do it. Usually, the most of the S curves are the other way where you decrease the, the darker regions and increase the brighter regions. I'm doing the reverse because I, this shot has already enough contrast due to the sunlight directly hitting on the model itself. Now, if the sunlight is not directly hitting the model, you may need to reverse this S curve for that same feel. Okay, so now we will go back to the exposure and actually fix it here. So, how much do we expose the shot? Depends on the skin tone itself. So, for the skin tone, because it's underexposed, we will not be going for a very high value. So we will use the brighter regions first to just, you know, increase the exposure. So how to know that whether you are overly exposed or overly underexposed is by this number at the top right hand corner. You see RGB just below histogram is around here. And as you hover around, you will see the numbers shift. So we are going to increase this number till about 95 for the brightest region in the red especially. While for the lower region, we try to keep it at 70 plus. As you can see, the rate is now nearly 95, 93, 94, and the uh, underexposed region is about 70 plus, which is about okay. This is the number we want. Now, the moment it reaches to about 98, 99, which it, it pretty much means that the skin is totally overexposed and reaching the tone of white. That's not what we want in such shots. So, about 95, 94, 93, we can see that it's a very bright shot, but it's not overexposed. While 70 plus is normally the number that I will aim for in shots with skin tones in the shadow region okay so that is pretty much it for the exposure so now we'll go to the final part which is the hsl hue saturation and luminance so for hue i will not touch it because we want a more natural shot for saturation itself i will drop red orange and yellow and the reason is really really simple for this because the skin tone is actually made out of this color normally. So it really depends on individual model skin. Some models have more orange, some models have more red. And also it depends on your white balance. If your white balance is more towards the orange side, you will lie within the orange and red. Well, if the white balance is lying more towards the blue side, you will actually go towards the orange, yellow, or even drop to purple, burgunder. It really, really depends on the white balance itself. And of course, the model skin tone. But for Tine example, it's orange, yellow, and red with a more bias to orange color. And then for the blue and aqua, I'm going to increase it drastically because we want that vibrant look. And the, as I said, the vibrance is actually from the sky normally. And that is what we want to lift up. Now we got a very, very vibrant sky. The exact number itself, you can go to the profile and see. It depends on the sky itself. Sometimes the sky is more dull, you may need to increase more. If the sky is less dull, you may... Now, if the sky is really very, very blue in some parts of the world, you may need to decrease this number to get a more balanced shot itself. And then the last thing is luminance. And luminance, I will just increase the skin tone. So this is the so by decreasing the saturation and increasing the luminance for skin tones, you'll get this more whitish skin effect. While if you reverse, you get this more orange, darkish skin effect itself. Okay, so for the aqua and blue, I'm also going to increase the blues. So the thing is that why am I you know, trying to get the sky back and then after that increase the luminance and therefore you know, losing some of that color tone in the sky is because that uh, our eyes can tell if the sky is uh, oversaturated blue but not bright our sky can, our, our eyes can also tell whether is it oversaturated blue and bright it's just a very weird illusion for the eyes itself and uh, by increasing the luminance it gives this effect that this is a bright day sky itself and that's what we want we want this feeling of vibrant bright day uh, not vibrant dull day and that's about it for the edit in fact i have nothing more to edit for this shot itself the last thing i will probably do is you know take a radial filter and put it on a face just increase the shadow slightly and that is about it for the shot itself if you do the before and after it will look exactly like what we have from the start itself so there is a profile for this you know uh okay so actually i created a lightroom profile you know lightroom uh, 
So actually I created a Lightroom profile for this edit here. And the profile is in the link below in the comments and the password, well, there is one, you know, if you have seen the video so far, there is a password in the middle and there is a password that is going to come out sometime now. And combining both password, take the middle one in front and then the behind one together, no spacing in between, combine them up and that is the password for the profile and also for the file to edit for this photo itself. So you can try it out on your own. And that's about it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy it because for all future tutorials, it will be the same thing. I will do once a week. I will show you through the Lightroom steps and then there'll be a password hidden, hidden in the video so that you can download the file to edit yourself and also download the profile to just directly apply to any other shot. Just a note, uh, in my future videos, I also try to keep everything to Adobe Color Profile so that it can be used across different cameras. As I said, this profile has been tested with Canon and Sony. With some light tweaking in the white balance, you'll probably get very similar effect or maybe some light tweaking in the HSL levels. And that's about it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy this tutorial itself. Do like and subscribe if you want to see more such contents. As I said, every week, I'll be doing one of these. So do keep yourself updated, follow my page, follow my YouTube, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.